Well, I'm Andrea. I'm an educator performer at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, but today I'm at home and I'm going to be doing a fun craft that you can do as well. Uh, and we're going to add a little some science elements and make it DMNS for sure. Now, what you're going to need is a box of crayons. Uh, you'll need some tape. I prefer the blue tape, the painter's tape, some glue, scissors, uh, and some paper or a canvas. If you're doing something really fancy, go ahead, use a canvas. But if you are not going to be using a canvas, you can definitely use some cardstock or um, tagboard paper like I have. You'll also need a hair dryer. Now children, make sure you get adults permission before using anybody else's hair dryer because you don't wanna break it. But anyway, hair dryer, and then there'll be a few extra things that you can use if you have around the house. It just might make the task a little more easy. But uh, let's get started. So, one thing I noticed when I actually was uh, going through my box of crayons, I noticed I had a mixture of, um, well, name brand crayons. Let's call it Schmeolas. So, copyright. And uh, also just some. Uh, I don't know, generic brands of crayons. And I was kind of wondering if they are the same type of wax, because what we're gonna be doing today is some awesome crayon melting art. And uh, crayons are made of paraffin wax and uh, other pigments to give them the color. And they should melt anywhere between 15, 115 to 154 degrees Fahrenheit. And I was just wondering if there would be a difference between generic and brand. So let's, get started and do a quick experiment. So here, I actually picked the same color crayons, uh, the name brand being on the right, and the generic on the left. And I picked the same colors just because I really wanted to make sure I'm eliminating all variables. That's things that are different. I wanna just test to see if these crayons will melt differently based on their wax composition. So I'm gonna use my painter's tape and tape them down pretty well because well, we're gonna be melting these, and sometimes if you don't put the tape on nice and tight, it'll actually slide out. And now we're gonna use the hot air from our hair dryer, and we're gonna start melting these and see if there's a difference. Well, I mentioned before, I have a few optional materials you can use. Um, you're really gonna to wanna to splatter proof your, uh, your creation space. So I have actually found a box and we ordered something, just kind of cut the front open, and I'm gonna be doing all of the heating of my crayons in this area. Um, I'm gonna actually, you know, be in the way there, but uh, I'm gonna hold it so you guys can see it. Uh, also, you might notice I have uh, my lovely crayons on a griddle, and I wrap the griddle in an aluminum foil because, again, spatter crayon can go everywhere. Uh, it is actually not the worst thing to get out, but it takes a while, so I recommend covering everything. All right, so now we're ready to get going. And uh, I assure you the hair dryer's on. I just didn't think you'd really wanna hear it. Now I am time-lapsing these. Um, be patient, it takes a while to heat up those crayons. But you can see, surprisingly, that orange one is already starting to spatter. There goes the black. And I continued around giving you a close-up of the pink and uh, Found some interesting results. All right, so what did we learn from this little experiment? Well, we could see that all colors, but the, uh, the name brand actually melted and none of the colors from the generic brand melted. Why? Not sure yet. You could kind of hypothesize maybe different types of wax, maybe the pigments affected it, but uh, definitely kind of a fun experiment doing a quick comparison. But now we're gonna actually do the splatter art in art. All right, so now let's do a project with a little more artistic flair to it. Um, in fact, I'm actually gonna have the crayons themselves as part of the artwork. So to do that, I don't really wanna use painter's tape to just tape them on. I'm gonna glue them down. Uh, just Elmer's glue will do, just a nice line, and uh, glue it like so. But this exciting piece is not my artwork. I actually pre-made and pre-glued some crayons here. So they're already stuck down. They're already ready to go. Just kind of have a neat rainbow pattern, a little uneven. And uh, we'll use this so the spatter kind of drips down and makes a cool effect. 
And here we go again. I assure you the hairdryer is on and things are being time lapsed. Uh, this project is easy to tape against the back of the box as I really only wanted the splatter to go in one direction, but it still goes in multiple. So and sometimes you'll see me tilting the box to maybe try to direct uh, where I want some of the, uh, the wax to drip. There I go. And finishing up with the, all of the colors. So again, you can go over them as many times as you need. All right, so we actually created a pretty cool little piece of art here. Um, this is another one that might be good to do on a canvas because it's a little wavy, but this uh, tag board has been sturdy. But you can see it's actually pretty cool and you can just hang it up, looks great on fridges. Now for my final art piece using the, the melted crayon art, I'm actually going to make an ode to the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. So if you've ever been to the fourth floor and looked off to the west, you get to see a great view of the Rocky Mountains. So I'm actually going to use um, a variety of mixed media to create an ode to the Rocky Mountain sunset. So the first thing you're going to do is actually create the Rocky Mountains. Um, I'm going to do this on black and you really just kind of can make a, kind of an uneven jotted line up and down, going through the mountains there. And you basically get to cut it out. Well, now that I cut my mountains out, um, you have a couple options here. Uh, you can put them up against a really nice yellow background. And in my case, I'm actually going to keep the, uh, the white showing. So it kind of looks like you have maybe a layered Rocky Mountains popping up in the background. Finally, I'm going to make the sun any circle stencil will do. Just put it down, draw around, and cut it out. But I'm not gonna glue anything down quite yet. All right, so now I have all my pieces. I'm gonna tuck my son behind here, and I'm gonna actually kind of lightly uh, trace over where my son is. Um, I don't want it to be uh, too dark, but uh, this is just going to be an approximation so I know where my sun is and I know where to lay out the crayons for melting. All right, so now you can see my lightly drawn sun and I've laid out a number of sunset colors. I actually, this is a great project to use if you know, you got a lot of broke crayons lying around, you can actually use these. So I'm going to begin to kind of tape them and outline them around. Um, you can use as much tape as you want. Sometimes the crayons do melt a bit, so you want to make sure that you got them down securely. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of bring them up to that line, tape down, bring in the next one, bring it up as close as I can get around that line, tape it to the next one, and so on. All right, so I made kind of a, it almost looks like a beautiful crayon Christmas tree, but basically, my son is gonna cover up this. What I want is the wax to drip from it. All right, so again, I have my optional griddle uh, just because I might be wanting to twist and turn uh, this particular uh, art piece to get a, a better angle. We'll see. Uh, but basically, we'll still do it in here. Um, if I were doing this without you watching, I'd just be facing in here, blowing it downwards. But I'm gonna get to do it this way. <laughs> And again, we're starting the time lapse as well as assuring you that the hairdryer's on. Now you can see this time I am using the griddle to help tilt the paper a lot um, to get kind of those rays of, well, sunlight to uh, move where I want them to. But again, sometimes the unpredictability of uh, using the hairdryer, it also makes for some really nice art. Uh oh, I'm losing a crayon there. Oh, it was gone. Now, if you do accidentally get any crayons on the floor like I did, you can scrape them up, but again, use that box to your advantage. So continuing to do the other side, I did give it some time to dry uh, on the other side before I started to attempt this side of the sunset. That's the advantage of video and time-lapse. 
because again, sometimes if you uh, don't allow the other side to dry, it could start dripping over in a direction you don't want. And a cool thing about this, you can go over and over again, uh, get different swirls, different layers. Again, the griddle is really helpful for getting the right angle. All right, now we get to uh, remove the tape, which I forgot to remove a piece earlier, uh, and see how everything will fit together. So just quickly remove the tape and carefully remove the messy blob of hot wax. All right, so once I removed the tape and most of the grain, I still had some chunks. So if you need to go back and quickly uh, get these uh, kind of evened out, you can do that. All right, well, I got most of the chunks removed, but kind of blurred. That's okay though, it's hard. So the next thing is we're actually gonna glue on the uh, pieces we've cut up earlier. So that includes our sun, which I'm just gonna put smack dab in the middle here. And cover up a few of my blotches. And then finally the mountains. So the mountains that are going to take over the back. Yes, glue, exciting to wait for. Mountains, background mountains number one. And background mountains number two. I'm gonna put the white, uh, the side that you actually use to draw up so you can see and differentiate the different mountains in the range. And here, we go, and there we have an awesome Colorado sunset. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and doing these fun experiments, as well as artistic crafts with uh, crayons and uh, heat. So have a great day and remember DMNS, keep on science in.